the AMT 1941 Plymouth Coca-Cola Edition. Coming up next on Monster Hobbies, what's in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Hello once again, model car fans, and welcome back to another great model car review. And this is a special kit because for a limited time, you can get it right now at Monster Hobbies by visiting our website at www.monster-hobbies.ca. I'll leave a direct link to this model kit in the description below. It's a great one. I've built this one many times in the past. Originally, it came out in 1975, and we'll take a look at some of the box art, as well as a model kit that I built of this car. It's really cool. That's coming up toward the end of the video. So for now, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Pound that notification bell so that every time I make a new video, you're the first one to see it. So without further ado, let's go down and see what's in the box. And now we roll the clock all the way back to 1941 as we look at our AMT Ertl, a 1941 Plymouth Businessman Coupe. Now I've got the plastic wrap on here, which is quite unique on our show. Usually I go and pull that off, but today I thought I would actually open it on film. So anyway, here we got our 41 Plymouth in this beautiful illustration of our good old gas station here as if they just dropped off a load with of course all the crates with our pop at stands full service and gas station on december the 5th 1941 <laughs> not too sure on significant dates pearl harbor and all that right or maybe that's later anyway there's the side of our box so i can't go back any further interesting so you get in Included with this are four bottle crates, complete with bottles. The nice uh, second way to build the Plymouth is a red car with drink Coca-Cola on it. The end of our box is much as the same as the front. Here we have our engine choices. Not really sure which engine this is, if it's like a 318 Chrysler or a Ford engine even. Anyway, AMT's Classic 41 Plymouth features include... Two engine options, including custom engine shown, stock tires and wheels, custom wheel tires and wheels, and then this nice full-out Coca-Cola decal sheet that's in here. Look at that. Look at all those options you get. And these little yellow ones, of course, are for the crates. And there's the end of the box. And on the bottom of the box here, we actually have, if you come in, is a silhouette of all the parts and components that you get with this kit. So if you're new to model building, you can actually see everything that's on the back. And now that I've shown you all these parts, I don't even need to open the box. Nope, just kidding. <laughs> of course. So for a limited time, we have this model down at our hobby shop. You can order it online or get one for yourself in your own collection. I don't know how long this series with the Coca-Cola models is gonna last. However, while you got it the chance, check it out. It's a cool kit. So, unfortunately, I'm about to lose part of this, which, of course, is this nice sticker stripe saying it's a 41 Plymouth, but it allows us to see more of that nice box art. Makes me feel like I'm back in 1941, even though I never was there. <laughs> I was born in 74. Okay, moving the lid off the box, we are treated to the chrome right up front. Because, like I said, in the future, everything's chrome. Now what's interesting about this though is in the older kits they used to give you the old slot mag style wheels but these ones came out in the mid 90s in one of the releases. All right moving along we get yellow plastic so you could easily duplicate that front box art car with at least half of it sort of semi painted for you. Then we get this nice parts tree which again is all the yellow components. Ooh, look at this nice crystal blue on here. Green blue, just like the real Coke bottles used to be. And then, of course, our windows here. 
and headlights. You get the nice tires with the white walls printed on. And there's our racing, or our custom tires. And then here's our engine components and everything else. Two engine blocks, the Chrysler Straight 6 and that mysterious V8. And then what else is in here? Uh, our Coca-Cola decal sheet, which we'll take a look at later. And our instructions. Very simplistic. So let's remove all this clutter in here. And when we return, we will actually take a look at all the components. To begin with, we have our nice Coca-Cola 41 Plymouth instruction sheets. And as it says, this kit can be built more than one way. And then it goes on, before assembling your model, study the instructions carefully. This will help you familiarize yourself with the parts, location, and on and on. And it, if you look at these instructions first, you get to decide what kind of engine you build before you actually start gluing it together. So to start with, we have our nice inline six Plymouth L-head block with our six spark plugs exposed out here, which of course you can wire and then put into your distributor which I do believe is on the other side here, on this part of the engine block. And then we have our belts and pulleys, our generator going on here, four-bladed metal fan. There's our water pump cover and everything else. And that is a hose that goes to the radiator. And then here we have, I do believe this is an updraft carburetor sitting on our, in, our intake and exhaust manifold and then our two-piece air filter and these air filters used to be full of oil actually which is interesting so there'd be a mesh in there i do believe um, i do have a 1951 studebaker in my backyard and it actually has a motor very similar to this so as we open this up and move around here a little we get that ford chrysler whatever motor this is i wish i knew a little better i can't seem to find any research Sometimes if you look through these AMT instructions going back in previous releases, which of course this kit came out in the 70s, I think 1975, you will find some reference somewhere about this, but they never really included it anywhere that I can find. So if you know what this engine is, please put it in the description down below. I'd like to solve a long time mystery. <laughs> is it a Ford or is it a 318? Anyway, it doesn't matter because you get a nice chrome air cleaner with the paper element exposed a four barrel carburetor, your intake manifold, the engine block in two left and right hand pieces with the transmission molded in place. Well, kind of, left and right side. The chrome valve covers, this nice front plate, the water pump and everything. And then our fan belts and whatnot and a four bladed fiberglass uh, fan. Then these nice big noodly style exhaust manifolds plus our oil right there oil pan so moving down here these are our wheels so you do get your stock wheels going into your stock tires with your stock wheel back they're chrome and then the custom ones these are the directional style these came out in the 1990s when uh, all those goodyear directional tires were popular and whatnot and then we have these nice chrome uh, wheels and wheel backs that are not chrome. Moving on to panel three, we have our interior going together. And here we have this nice bench seat popping in. This is a slightly longer interior bucket than the 41 Ford kits, but still much the same, the businessman style coupe. And then you have your custom steering wheel, custom shifter and custom steering column. These ones have a little point on them, sort of like a pencil end, which is kind of interesting. Your steering wheel, remember that it's two across and one down. <laughs> I have one of these mounted upside down in one of the ones I made in the past. There's this little chrome piece that goes on the steering wheel. That is, I do believe they called it a speed steering ball. You clutched it in your hand and you ro moved it around and it would help you to steer better. These were eventually made illegal in some places because these were all manual steering, not power steering. So if you hit a bump, the steering wheel would roll back on you. And if your hand was in the way, this thing would bash your knuckles something fierce. So eventually they became illegal. 
But at any rate, there's your dashboard going in and your firewall, and there's a little thing that pops in there too, which I believe is the coil. Then we have our Coke bottle and crates. How it shows you them going together. It's just basically you put your... I do believe you put your decal around the outside. And our paint call-outs. Panel 4 is showing our body going together. It is a split window, so you need to find that little piece and glue it in there. Then you got your chrome grills going into the back of your front valance panel, which pops up in here. And then you've got your windows and your mirror. And the running boards are molded separately, and you can glue them right on there along the fenders. Illustration 5 shows our full frame under here on our chassis, as well as the exhaust pipe going in here. This, of course, is a stock version, so you've got this pan across the back as well. Your big radiator with the radiator uh, cover on the top. And that's where your hoses would go. This is like an auxiliary tank or something, if I remember right. There is a sway bar in the front. There's your Chrysler 6-cylinder going in here. And then as we move the panel down, there is something that is interesting about this kit, which was sort of a 90s edition, because you could build this as a lowrider. Prior to this, the lowrider option didn't exist, but what they've done is, on the springs here, they've put this uh, circle in, which goes into your rear axle here. And uh, then they've got... Th that was the original, the one down below. And then when they came up with the idea of lowering this, they put another one of these circles on the top. So if you do lower it, this kind of looks a bit ridiculous. Because <laughs> no one would do that on a real spring. What they would have done is added some wood blocks underneath here or something to lower it. But at any rate, we can't uh, spend too much time on that. This has your um, shock absorber going in. Yeah, it's saying, note, C custom chassis for optional leaf spring setup so stock is going through the bottom there's your wheels going through it's got the metal wires the 1 16th gauge going in through there there's your kingpin in the front with your springs and it does have separate lower a arms so that's always nice and this is the custom section here showing our frame and chassis again with that v8 engine going in this time around our radiator hoses and everything and then it says here, trim off shaded area on the bottom leaf spring part on the inside to raise it up, or lower it, I guess, into here. And then you have your stock pan going there. You've got different mufflers this time around with the custom wheels. Remember the direction of your tires. Make sure they point forward. And then the inner fender aprons are also cut out, as the stock ones were not. That's to clear these big headers in here. And down at the bottom of that chassis page, we actually have our paint callouts in here. Goes from A to X, Y, Z, double A, I, C, B, C, and then some diamonds and stuff. Full diamond is semi gloss, and empty diamond, or sorry, triangle, is gloss black, and a split one is metallic. So just something to watch out for in your paints and callouts. Coming over here, we have our final assembly. This is your completed body. Goes straight down into the interior tub and then glues onto the chassis. Make sure you have this all glued because I actually have my first Plymouth that I ever built. I went to pick it up by the sides and the entire bottom and everything fell straight out to the ground and crashed on the concrete. Anyway, oh, here's your inner fender panels here, the stock ones without the notches for the inline six. This beautiful front chrome bumper goes on. The headlights are up on there as well. They've got that nice little turn signal fin up in the top. Along the back, you have your uh, license plate going on there, as well as the trunk release handle, and a lot of other great things. So that concludes our look at our 41 Plymouth instruction sheet. And now let's actually take a look at the plastic components. And here we have the body of our 41 Plymouth Businessman Coupe. And it is quite a nice body, even though it's molded in yellow. <laughs> well, yellow won't be too bad to cover up, though. At least it's not molded in red. But at any rate, there is a line here and a line here, which I know a lot of people think is a seam line. 
But in actuality, that line is on the 41 Plymouth. And what it is, it's because back in the day when they were stamping metal components, they couldn't stamp out something, you know, perfectly all the way across like this. That's very deep for a stamp to go into. Steel stamps. So what they would do is stamp the fender, and then they would stamp a piece like this, you know, and they would attach them in underneath and would have either a piece of rubber or something in between here on the real car so that it wouldn't rust in between the two pieces. So this is actually supposed to be on there, much like I do believe the 41 or yeah, 41 Ford has something like this on it too. And just to prove the that that's a true statement, there's also that bit of a ridge along here on this edge. So just so you guys know, so that you don't sand this smooth, and because I made that mistake too. <laughs> uh, but if you actually look at a real 41 Plymouth, you will note that line is there. So just lightly sand over the top to get rid of the seam line. But don't get rid of the line itself, if you know what I mean. Know what I mean, Vern? <laughs> Remember, Ernest? So this has a nice trim on the sides. There's chrome along there. The door handles are nice and fresh. I mean, this kit has really stood the test of time in the mold department for just how long ago it was created. 1975 is 45 years ago from 2000, or sorry, 2020. You get the nice Plymouth emblem on the back here. Look good with some bare metal foil and red paint. There's a little spot for the gas filler cap on the back of that fender there. Overall, it's quite nice. That grill will go in the front. Now, I took this straight out of the bag, just maybe save some time here in my video. There's our under frame here, and as you can see, it does have the nice X bracing in there, just like the real 41 Plymouth, as well as the coils going in there for, and our everything else would mount onto the top of those arms. There are some mold marks in here, as you can see, but again, your number 16 hobby blade will be able to remove those really nicely. Just scrape in one direction, scrape in the other till it goes flat, or use a file across here. Try not to nick those pins because that's where your interior hooks in. Yeah, so on the inside, looks pretty good. You could actually cover in here and uh, figure out a way to make your trunk open on your body. There's where the shackles of the springs are going to go into. Your shock absorbers there and there. There are some nice brake cable lines in here. So overall, still really nice, really crisp. There are s the nice flash here on the sides. You got to get rid of a sharp seam line. And now coming out of the body again, we also have our interior tub. This one again has mold marks. There's some unfortunately right on the seat cushion, which is never a good sign. But again, it's in a spot where there's a lot of room around here where you could get that number 16 hobby blade in there carefully remove it. There is some flash coming out here. Again, being a tub, the door panels are pretty bland. You can't get too much detail when you're trying to go down this way. Your best detail is on the top of the seats, of course, and the carpet detail, which is really nice, actually. Looks like mohair. Uh, there's your front three pedals, your clutch, your brake, and your gas. They're very tiny looking, though. And then your steering console or column will fit into here. Uh, yeah, so that's our interior, and as you can see, of course, everything went nice in that body. So there's those two pins. If you turn this over, there's those little blocks with the holes in them. So they would go right into the little pins. You can hear it click into place. And then our body would drop in like this. So remember to look where this thing is going to go together, and then glue it where it's supposed to be because, unlike me, that one time... See, I picked up my 41 Plymouth like this, and everything fell out the bottom. And because the interior and everything was all built up and it had the metal wheels and all the rest, it just did the dead drop. <laughs> so, like I say, make sure you glue this all together really nicely. So the first bag of yellow components that I'm opening up here has these three parts trees in it. This one has our stock components, so there's those running boards that we need along the side of the car. Our hood, with a nice sunken spot in here for the chrome. It's a... actually, sailing ships is the chrome emblem. And then there's our inner fenders. 
fender aprons, pardon me, our wheel backs and our stock steering wheel. Remember this part of it goes down. <laughs> okay. And then here we have that grill insert or the grill shroud. A uh, bit of flash on there. There's a lot of little details in here that we'll have to paint. There's our license plates, our dashboard. Here's our rear axle. And then there's the rear springs. And if you're going to build this stock, you know, cut this off and reshape it with a file just so it looks normal. So you don't have these funny circle things sticking out in the middle of nowhere. And then these are the custom wheel backs. There's three here, so somewhere else in the kit is the rest. There's our front bench seat, which is quite nice. Our lower A arms, and then the coil springs, a, a brace across the front or sway bar, and then we have our steering here. That's our steering wheel. You notice how it's got these pivots in here in the triangular shape. That's very typical of back in the, that era. There's our king pins in the front and our shock absorbers. So let's just take a look at some of these quickly, a little more detail. So as you can see, there is some nice molds around, or molding, I guess, on the hood. Underneath, you've got the actual braces that are correct. And then you've got these three mold marks, which you have to scrape down. The uh, running boards here have mold marks underneath. So you might want to run your file across those and get them nice and flat before you glue them on. Then here we've got some more mold marks in there on the inner fender aprons, which you'll have to get rid of. See the nice detail on the wheel backs, drum brakes all the way around. So very nicely done. Again, you got to remember this is 1975, so there's a lot of flash squishing out at this point, even though AMT round two is doing their best to make sure this doesn't happen. It still can. There's a little Plymouth emblem right in the front. Again, there's the uh, ridge here that, that's supposed to be on there. The dashboard, it's quite nice detail. Jay Leno actually has one of these Plymouth Businessman Coupes. It's a dark blue one. So if you watch Jay Leno's Garage, look up 41 Plymouth Coupe. Actually, I'll leave a, dis a link in the description up here. How about that? Or a card, I should say. Pardon me, a link. Well, it's still a link. Missing link. <laughs> okay, anyway. There are mold marks on the back here, so you'll have to deal with them. There's actually six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So yeah, you need to scrape these out because those chrome inserts are going to pop in there. So they have to sit flat. On the back of the license plates, there's a couple of bumps. I think you're supposed to leave those on there just for location. Location, location. And as you can see, they've got those funny little lips on the inside of those springs. Anyway, and then here we have the one with our seat. Nice button detail on there. Very well done from AMT of the past. And again, very nice. So let's just bring our parts back out here where we can give them a round of applause. <laughs> Oops, before we move on to the next set. Our second parts bag actually contained one, two, three, four parts trees. And these ones are, of course, our engine and drive line stuff, as well as our firewall. So here's that nice V8 engine again. This is a very nicely detailed uh, motor, of course. Many parts. A little more simplistic than later AMT kits, but for 1975 this is quite neat. This, I do believe, came out as a street machine version in the later 70s. There's those noodle exhaust pipes again, going, which should be mounting onto these little exhaust man, or uh, mufflers, pardon me. Then here's our inner fender aprons with the cutouts for these to fit into, as well as our custom steering wheel, steering column here, and radiator hoses. Over on here we have our stock components, the radiator. This is a little piece for the uh, split windows. There's a secondary radiator tank. There's our steering column. This would be three on the tree shifting. The back little piece there, um, our differential here. There's our exhaust manifold along the bottom and the intake along the top here with an updraft carburetor. There's our water pump and everything. Battery, fan, there's our air cleaner, all these little components. 
This, of course, is our cylinder head. Or they used to call this the plank. <laughs> There's our six-cylinder engine with the stock transmission on there. Our firewall, our custom wheel back. Remember I said we'd find it. And then the exhaust pipe, the stock one. So let's just take a look at these a little closer up here. So you can see the nice motor. They're, they do have the frost plugs on it. The little gateway for our shifter here on the side of our transmission. The detail on our intake manifold, a carburetor, just a single four barrel, or maybe a two barrel even. Now it would be a four barrel. Well, you never know. <laughs> I've got a cutlass with a two barrel on it. <laughs> uh, hey, maybe you Mopar guys would know what this is. If so, write in the comments down below. Again, nice detail on there with all the little rivets and everything. Now again, if you turn this over, there's mold marks on the back. we got to scrape out with that number 16 hobby blade. Really cool stuff. So let's move that to the side. Here's our firewall. You can see the nice wiring and details in there. That little centerpiece where I do believe the coil is sticking out. Our wheel back. Here's our stock components. So there's the radiator. This is the little part that hooks into the frame underneath. All that nice detail of the nice L-head 6 there. There's our distributor sitting on that long shaft because the crank the crankshaft is way at the bottom here. So again you can see all that nice detail on there. There is some numbers, proper factory numbers, in the top of that cylinder head. So very nice. It's too bad you can't flip it over and see the uh, reliefs in the cylinder head on the top. But, you know, whatever. There are some old marks there need to be removed. There is a little ridge in here, which is kind of nice. So again, there you go. And finally, we've got our exhaust pipe, which, of course, I mean, what, what can you say about that, right? So there's all our engine components and our final bit of the yellow parts tree. Oh, let's go like this. All together. And now let's carry on. Next up we have my favorite part of all model kits and that of course is the chrome. And what a great bunch of chrome we have here for you today. So like I said here's our custom wheels which be going on there on your custom version. There's the original Plymouth front and rear bumpers and you will have to paint some red paint along here. There's some nice red striping that was factory stock. There's our headlights with the little turn signals up top. And then here we have our valve covers in chrome, as well as these bumpers, which I do believe are later DeSoto style. Actually, I'm not sure on that, <laughs> but they are nice. The chrome plating on this is actually quite wonderful. There's our grills. Now a little bit of Nolan oil in here and then wipe it off the top and you'll get the chrome bars coming through. And there is a red pinstripe that goes in here on the actual stock version and then there's our little four boats or our sailing ship pardon me going on there for our hood emblem there's a long antenna here rear view mirror or side view mirror rear view mirror there's our trunk latch these are the stock chrome wheels and now the top part is supposed to be chrome and then this dome part that's down here is actually supposed to be the color of the body of the car there's our tail lamps and our gas uh, gas cap there and then we have our paper element air cleaner here so I'll just bring this up into our camera you can see the nice detail how clean and crisp this is look at the in the wheels there really nice there's our factory wheels there are custom wheels pardon me custom wheels almost look like late model factory wheels for some of the other bigger cars on the back of course our mold marks so Again, scrape them off. Paint the backs of these black so they disappear when you turn the car upside down. Um, but yeah, very nice work. Now we get into the clear components. And this is the whole reason why I bought this kit, as well as the decals, which we'll see in a minute here. Because I really like the way they did this Coca-Cola version of this car. You get these nice bottles in the wooden cases, just like in the past molded in that green color that was notorious for the coca-cola bottles 
And then, of course, we get our stock windshield. Now, this is typical of the 60s, 70s, with all the glass being molded as one thing with these little bridges that go up inside the roof. You could cut these off if you want and maybe go around here with your Dremel just to make this look a little better so that, you know, when you turn your car over, you don't see through the windows these big runners going in here. The glass was in a bag, so no scratches, which is very nice. Mold marks up here again, which you need to scrape down. Whoops. You would paint this body color if you want to, or sorry, interior upholstery color if you want to make it disappear. But again, you still got the height in there. The headlights, of course, you cut all this out and then clean them up along the edges and pop them into the headlight uh, mountings. But here's those Coke bottles. I mean, that's pretty cool. See how they all stand up and everything. You just need to paint those along the casings here. And then, of course, paint over your cases. These will stack into one another as well for that proper Coca-Cola bottle look that they would have back on these in the past. So again, really cool stuff on the clear components. Here we have our choices for vinyl tires. And you may be thinking you're looking at actually two pairs of tires, right? So here's your stock and here's your custom stuff. But what you don't know is you're actually looking at four pairs of tires. So what do I mean by that? Well, here we have these nice tampo printed white wall tires that are perfectly, you know, centered, <laughs> which is really nice. Now I was thinking these were the original Firestone tires that came with the model kit, you know, that used to come back in the day. But actually these are brand new tires. We'll take a look at that in just a second here. And on here we have these Eagle, Goodyear Eagle GTS tires, I believe they are. And these ones have the high raised letters on them. So these are sort of the ones you would paint yellow and use on your Formula One type of car. However, what I'm talking about here now is if you turn these over, you actually get different Goodyear lettering. Same tire, but these ones are actually narrower than on that other side. And if you take these guys and flip them over, you get a brand new style of Firestone tire with a little Firestone uh, diamondy kind of thing in here and then Firestone written along there. And then the tread pattern on these is really nice. I don't know how well that's going to pick up, but it is quite different from the original older Firestones. And then these ones, your Goodyears, have that directional tread pattern on them. There we go. You can see it there. Let's try that with this. Yeah, so you can see that nice tread pattern on there. These uh, old Firestones, of course, would be bias tires. So that means that inside the metal is going like this around the uh, tires. Sometimes it's even fabric, you know. Or not fabric, but uh, like a rope or something. And then the Goodyears, of course, would be your radials. So they're going at 90 degree angles with, of course, another couple of bands going on the top. That's all underneath the tread here. So, very cool tires, and this should be fun to build in any way you want. Oh, the white walls. Now, funny thing is, my dad grew up in the 50s, and he was saying that you'd he'd see guys spend a lot of money for white wall tires and then mount them on the car this way, with the white walls on the inside. And my dad would always say, why would you want to do that? You paid all that money for white walls. You're putting them on the inside. But people did it, so <laughs> there you go. Finally, we have our decal sheet for our Coca-Cola car. And I know a lot of people are saying on Facebook and whatnot that there's just too many of these Coca-Cola vehicles, but you know something? I love them because look at all this great decals and graphics and that you get with this. All this vintage work. You can really build your own Coca-Cola car any way you like. There's the bottle with the wings on it. You know, there's the one with the green in the back here. Excellent work. The drink Coca-Cola in bottles. There's the bottles. <laughs> All this nice stuff. You can use these in dioramas. There's a bunch of Coca-Cola signs for dioramas. These are, of course, for the bottles. And they even have the cutout here for your hand to go in. You've got Michigan license plates as well as California ones for 1941. And then red and white Coca-Cola license plates, which with the other decal sheets in these series, you can switch them so you have red on both ends or white 
I d actually, this Plymouth only has a license plate in the back, so no sense in, you know, two of the same. But anyway, great a decal sheet and offers you a lot of options to make anything you want into a Coca-Cola vehicle. And here we have our 41 Plymouth once it's all put together. Now this is an earlier version of the AMT kit, the 1990s version, so I don't have any of the Coca-Cola markings on here. You can see I painted it a metallic red. This was with a lacquer paint. 1941 Plymouth license plate across the back. But again, very nice work. Goes together quite easily. And you get a very beautiful car as the end result. No problems building this kit, and I highly recommend it for new model builders or those that are, you know, into skill level 2. And that completes our look at the AMT Ertl 1941 Plymouth Businessman Coupe. Now, if you've built this great model in the past, please let us know how you like the build. And please share your photos with us on our Facebook page in the link below. Well, I hope you enjoyed that great review as we got to see the AMT 1941 Plymouth Coupe in the Coca-Cola markings with those really cool Coca-Cola bottles. And if you would like to get a copy of this model, don't forget to check us out at www.monster-hobbies.ca. It'll only be around for a little time. <laughs> so make sure you are the first one to get it. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family. Pound that notification bell so that every time I make a new video, you're the first ones to see it. Come over and support us on our Patreon page. I'll also leave that link down below. And until next time, everyone, happy model building.